Pregnancy and creating life is one of the most remarkable biological processes. Going from one cell that we call a zygote all the way up to trillions of cells that make up a whole human is just nuts, and it's incredible that it actually works. However, we do know that there are times where things can go wrong, and one of those times is with a certain type of pregnancy that can be life-threatening, and this is an ectopic pregnancy. So today, with the help of the cadavers, we're going to show you exactly where this pregnancy takes place, why it is so serious, how it's treated, and what puts females at risk for developing this type of pregnancy. And of course, if there's anything we can do to help mitigate that risk. This is definitely going to be an interesting and important one. So let's do this. First, let's define the word ectopic. It comes from the Greek word ektopos, meaning out of place. In medicine, ectopic is often used to describe something that's in the wrong location. So an ectopic pregnancy literally means a pregnancy that's out of place. Now it's estimated that about one to 2% of pregnancies are ectopic. And while that might sound like a small number, it's a significant issue because ectopic pregnancies are one of the leading causes of maternal death during the first trimester. But again, why are they so dangerous? Well, to answer that question, let's first go over some key anatomical structures on this cadaver dissection, and this will help us to understand the ins and outs of ectopic pregnancies. So here we have a sagittal section through the female pelvis, and so this would be a cut like so through the midline, and we're looking in to the right side of the pelvis. And here you can see the vaginal canal hooking up to the cervix of the uterus here, and here is the body of the uterus, and coming off to the uterus we have the uterine tube embedded in that tissue there, and the uterine tube is also known as the fallopian tube, and here we have the actual ovary. Now about once every 28 days, ovulation takes place, which is when the ovary releases an egg, technically called an ovum. Now what is really interesting is that when the ovary releases the ovum, it is temporarily in the abdominal cavity. Imagine a little egg popping off the ovary and just hanging out in this little space for a second there. But the space is specifically called the peritoneal cavity for you anatomy nerds out there. But if you look really closely at the end of the uterine tube, you can see these little fuzzies or these finger-like projections, and these are called fimbriae. And these will move and produce waves or currents that pull the egg into the uterine tube. So if this arm was like the uterine tube, and my fist was the ovary here, and an egg gets released out of the ovary here, and my fingers here are representing the fimbriae, you'd start to have this fluttering or this come to me ovum. Not sure why it's in a creepy voice, but it is. And what this does is it pulls or attracts the egg into the uterine tube. Meanwhile, in the land of spermatogonia, which we'll say is a far off land located within the testes, sperm cells are being born and training for their pilgrimage to the land of fallopia. Because when sperm cells are released into the female reproductive tract during intercourse, they will move up the vaginal canal into the uterus and then into the actual uterine tube that I'm pinching here. And we already know that the uterine tube is also known as the fallopian tube or the land of fallopia from our little medieval analogy. And remember, what is in this tube from the first part of our story? A beautiful ovum. And when one of the sperm cells fertilizes the ovum, it is now called a zygote with all the necessary genetic information to create a human. But this next part is extremely important for our knowledge about an ectopic pregnancy. Normally, cilia that are lining the inside of the uterine tube, as well as the smooth muscle that are the smooth muscle that is built into the wall of the uterine tube, those cilia will beat and the smooth muscle will contract. And this propels the now dividing zygote towards the uterus where it can actually implant into the endometrium or the inside lining of the uterus and begin the process of developing a placenta. However, with an ectopic pregnancy, this does not occur because in the case of an ectopic pregnancy, this process meets a little bit of a blockade. And instead of the embryo moving down the uterine tube and implanting in the uterus where it's supposed to, it implants somewhere outside of the uterus, usually in the actual uterine tube. And because the structures outside the uterus, like the uterine tube, are not designed to stretch and accommodate a growing embryo, when the embryo grows to a certain size, this can stretch the uterine tube beyond its limits, 
causing it to rupture and thereby leading to internal bleeding. And it is because of this internal bleeding that ectopic pregnancies can quickly turn into medical emergencies and potentially lead to death. Now in just a second, we are going to talk about some potential causes of ectopic pregnancies. But with all this talk about pregnancy, did you know that most medical organizations recommend that females of childbearing years supplement with folate? Because in addition to its other physiological functions, folate decreases the risk of fetal neural tube defects. And so you could get this in a complete multivitamin from the sponsor of today's video, LiveGood. LiveGood makes supplements formulated by an industry-leading team of natural health experts, ensuring that they are of the highest quality. Now you may think that in order to get a high quality supplement that you are going to have to pay a high price. However, LiveGood believes that everyone deserves access to high quality supplements without the insane markups. And so LiveGood cuts out the middleman so that they can sell at the lowest prices. I personally take a handful of supplements. My absolute go-tos are creatine, whey protein, and what I call my daily vitamin insurance policy. I call it my insurance policy because sometimes I'm not always the best at getting all of my necessary vitamins through my diet. But like I said, these supplements are very high quality. For example, their whey protein is sourced from 100% grass-fed cattle and 100% sourced from sustainable U.S. farms. And again, this is at a reasonable price. And this is probably why LiveGood is one of the fastest growing supplement companies on the planet. So if you want to check out LiveGood and their high quality supplements at the best prices, go to livegood.com slash humananatomy for 10% off your first order. That information and the link will also be in the description below. And now, back to ectopic pregnancies. So is there something specific that causes an ectopic pregnancy, or are there factors that put someone more at risk for developing this type of pregnancy? Well, sometimes an ectopic pregnancy can just be from bad luck, but the overall major cause of an ectopic pregnancy is a disruption of the normal anatomy of the uterine tube from factors such as infection, surgery, or congenital abnormalities. Pretty much anything that blocks or makes it difficult for the developing embryo to move down the uterine tube and into the actual uterus can lead to an ectopic pregnancy. And here are some examples of what can cause this. A condition known as pelvic inflammatory disease can cause scarring and damage to the uterine tube, making it more likely for the zygote to get stuck and implant in the uterine tube. Pelvic inflammatory disease results from infections like chlamydia or gonorrhea. And this is a major reason why a female preparing for pregnancy will often undergo STI testing. A previous ectopic pregnancy is also another risk factor, and this is similar to pelvic inflammatory disease in that the previous ectopic pregnancy may have left behind structural damage and scarring. Another risk factor is tubal reconstructive surgery. Maybe you've heard of someone getting their tubes tied. This is technically referred to as a tubal ligation, where the surgeon separates the uterine tubes as a permanent type of birth control. But if the female changes her mind and actually wants to have more kids later on, they can try to reverse this process, and depending on the scarring left over in the tubes, this can make one more at risk for an ectopic pregnancy. Now, there are a handful of other risk factors that we could list, but the last one I want to mention is quite interesting. Cigarette smoking is associated with a two to three-fold increase in the risk of ectopic pregnancies. Now, how in the world would cigarette smoking increase one's risk of an ectopic pregnancy? Well, do you remember when I mentioned that the cilia lining the inside of the uterine tube helped the developing zygote move down from the uterine tube and into the uterus? Well, the nicotine in the cigarettes can paralyze the cilia in the uterine tube, which means now that developing zygote has a greater chance of not making it down and implanting in the uterus. So based on what we've just learned, reducing one's risk of ectopic pregnancies would start with safe sex practices, STI testing, checkups for pelvic inflammatory disease, and not smoking. Now, I want to be clear here. I am not at all suggesting that if someone has experienced any of these previously mentioned conditions or situations, that they shouldn't get pregnant or that this individual couldn't still have a successful pregnancy. It just would help to know of the increased risk so that you could monitor the whole process of pregnancy a little bit more closely. But let's talk about the symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy and how they are treated. Initially, an ectopic pregnancy can feel like a normal pregnancy with symptoms like a missed period, breast tenderness, frequent urination, and even morning sickness. But as things progress, other abnormal symptoms start to arise, such as vaginal bleeding. The characteristics of the bleeding can vary greatly from light brown staining to hemorrhage, and the bleeding is usually intermittent. 
but may also occur as a single episode or could be continuous. And as the embryo enlarges, the uterine tube starts to stretch and distend, and this causes abdominal pain. And this pain can vary, but it is usually in the lower abdomen, starting as mild to moderate cramping on one side, and this can continue to progress to the point where the tube ruptures. And once the uterine tube ruptures, this can result in a sudden severe increase in the pain. And this is where things start to become even more serious because this rupturing results in internal bleeding. This can also result in additional symptoms such as shoulder pain, as this is a sign that the blood from the internal bleeding is actually reaching and irritating the diaphragm. Dizziness and fainting can also occur due to shock and blood loss. So clearly, this can be a bit scary if not treated. And obviously, you would want to catch this before the uterine tube ruptures. So when diagnosing an ectopic pregnancy, medical providers rely on a combination of tests. A transvaginal ultrasound is the most useful imaging test for determining the location of the pregnancy. Another useful test is looking at the rise in gonadotropin-releasing hormone, maybe you've heard of HCG before. With an ectopic pregnancy, the levels of HCG rise more slowly than they do in a normal pregnancy. And so doing repeated or serial HCG tests in combination with the transvaginal ultrasound, along with the history and physical exam of the patient, can help confirm the diagnosis. And if an ectopic pregnancy is confirmed, it unfortunately cannot continue safely. Treatment is essential to protect the health and life of the mother. And the options for treatment depend on multiple factors. But one of those factors is how early the ectopic pregnancy is diagnosed. In general, if the pregnancy is caught early enough and there's no immediate risk of rupture, doctors may use a medication called methotrexate. Methotrexate works by inhibiting DNA synthesis and by stopping the cells of the pregnancy from dividing and growing. There are also certain situations where methotrexate treatment is contraindicated and surgical treatment is necessary. And this is certainly true if the pregnancy has caused a rupture. This often is laparoscopic, where the surgeon removes the tissue, repairs the uterine tube, but in some cases, the affected tube may have to be removed. And with any of these treatments, follow-up and close monitoring of HCG levels is important to ensure all the tissue from the ectopic pregnancy has been removed. But clearly, an ectopic pregnancy can be a traumatic experience, not just physically, but emotionally. Many people experience grief, guilt, or fear about future pregnancies. So it is definitely important to seek support through friends, family, or professional counseling in order to properly address those feelings and concerns. So I hope that gave you some useful information about ectopic pregnancies. But as always, thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. Stay anatomically awesome, and I'll see you in our app or in the next video.